And I hope certainly you were one of the people yeah, inter you interviewed, right? Sorry. You were one of the people interviewed, I hope. You're, oh, yes. You've sat on this side, I hope. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say you. you got her last week. Good, yes. good, good. That needs to okay. happen. Good afternoon, Jean and David. We're so thankful that you could join us in this moment to recapture some of Pflugerville's history. Uh, it is 50 years old, and so um, tell us your name and where you were born. My name is Jean Garlick. It was Jean Wendell Schaefer before I was married to David. 48 years ago. I was born in Nuremberg, Germany uh, as a German citizen. My mother eventually married an American and when I was uh, 13 years old I became an American citizen in the state of North Carolina along with my mom. And your name sir? David Garlick. I was born in Monterey, California at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you two meet? Uh, that was in high school. I was, uh, I was in high school in Coppers Cove. We were both Army brats at that point in time. And um, his sister and I were in a play together in high school. David was already at the University of Texas. And uh, he came to see his sister in the play and saw me instead. So we met when I was 16, he was 19, and we married when I was 19 and a half. So you attended the University of Texas? I what did. did you major in? Science education. Uh, I have a master's degree in that, and uh, my first job was at the university. I, um, in 1968, when I got my master's degree, everything in the world had been messed up by computers. Uh, banks were advertising that, um, proudly advertising that we do not use computers because so many accounts had been messed up and so it was very easy to get a job as a programmer with a master's degree. Um, I, anyway, I got a job as a programmer in 68 at $200 a month more than I would have made as a teacher with a master's degree. And uh, went to work at UT. I led the team that wrote the first pre-registration program at UT. Uh that was in the early ages of getting a computer science degree. I, I don't know when they became of age, but I graduated from UT in 64, and it, it was not really a degree plan yet in 1960. So I, I'm thinking yeah. you were probably one of the first uh, that got the actual degree in that. Uh, I, yes. Uh, I, I think they may have uh, been offering degrees, but it was just a recent thing. I just took the courses as electives as part of my science education training and uh, realized that um, I could get a job. It took me, in fact, an hour and a half to get my first job at the university. So um, how did you uh, come to Pflugerville? Well, we, we were both going to UT. Um, I was majoring in German and English and actually taught high school German at McCallum High School for four and a half years. And um, we were living in an apartment and then a duplex and decided that we would venture out and actually purchase a house. And so we came, um, came north, found a house that we loved, which happened to be right on, it was actually in Travis County, but it was in the Pflugerville School District. It was as far away from Pflugerville as you could be and be in the Pflugerville School District. And had heard good things about the district, didn't have any children yet at the time. Um, so we bought our house and it was kind of in the, the Breaker Lane and North Lamar area and um, kind of started being connected to the Pflugerville community when our, especially when our son was born and he actually went through the Pflugerville schools when there was one of each school. There was you know, one elementary, one middle school and then he was in the first class when the first elementary school uh, split and Palmer Lane was opened and I was president of the PTO at that time and we moved very traumatic day when the children had to split up and half of them went to Palmer Lane. And then he was again in the school when it split and the new quote, middle school was built. Um, and he graduated from high school when there was only one high school in 1991. So that connected us to the Pflugerville community is through the schools and doing volunteer work in the schools. Uh, um, volunteerism is a big uh, component of any thriving community and uh, 
So when Ryan started in school, you became involved with the uh, the moms and the parents to support the school. Right. And did y'all have any really big projects that impacted uh, the community? <laughs> I think my favorite one was when he was in elementary school. Uh, Guy Wilson was the principal, and uh, we actually still keep up with him. Um, and he allowed me to start a program that we called the VIP program, the Very Important Person Program. And I would bring interesting people to school about once a month, um, brought people who had worked at the Pickle Research Center putting dinosaur bones together. I brought an artist friend who was a quadriplegic and painted with a mouth stick. And so he, would, he said I was the only person he had ever allowed other than his teachers to actually change the schedule of his day. Um, that we, you know, put on these programs for the kids. And I think that was, that was one of my favorite ones. And then David and I were both involved with uh, the very first Panther celebration, the all-night um, drug and alcohol-free party for the graduating seniors. Uh, we were the fundraisers for that um, at Palmer Lane. We built the playground. Yeah. That, that was interesting. The, uh, there was no playground when the school was built, so the kids I guess meandered about. Uh, <laughs> the um, Jean was president of the PTO and she said we should build a playground. So it ended up and people said okay you know we've got this year it'll be a year from now before you guys could possibly build a playground. Actually we got 150 volunteers mm -hmm. um, well, they, uh, and uh, built it in three months. So it was the first year the kids got to use it. And I think this uh, continues today that they do have a uh, graduation celebration yes. following graduation to provide activities and a safe environment for. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that was a good start. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. It makes a difference with students. And I think all the schools have it now, if I understand Each right. Each individual mm -hmm. high school has one. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that, that's marvelous. Uh, so how, tell us about your career then. Um, uh, in the present business that you have. How did you get started in that arena? Well, that was David's fault. I, <laughs> I was a perfectly content high school teacher, and, um, well, it wasn't entirely his fault. Uh, somewhat Ryan's, our sons. Um, when when uh, it became obvious that we were going to get to have a child, I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So I retired from teaching, and David and I both have always loved art, and we couldn't afford to purchase any. So we would go to the Austin Public Library, which at that time you could check out paintings. Uh, just like you checked out books, you could bring a painting home, put it on the wall, and enjoy it for I think six weeks or something. So we would do that, and then we would go to the art shows that were around town, the $10 and under art shows. And I just kept saying, oh, I love that, and oh, I'd love to have that on the wall. And David kept saying, well, I can do that. And so I said, well, then why don't you? And he sat down and began to draw and drew these beautiful, beautiful black and white um, paintings of wildlife and Indians and things that we had admired at the shows. So our friends saw those and they said, uh, gosh, you should make prints and you should go to the art show and sell them yourselves. So we did um, and, and started out with what, maybe 13 prints, maybe not yeah, even that yeah, many. Uh -huh. We made a little display and we started exhibiting at the shows and a friend of ours was tearing down a barn. So he made some barn wood frames for us and I went down to the local glass company, bought some glass, went down to the local hobby shop and bought some mats and got a hammer and nails and on my dining room table decided I was a framer. <laughs> and uh, started framing pictures and taking them to art shows and lo and behold they sold. And uh, that was the beginning of it. So tell us, uh, uh, right now you have uh, clients uh, all over uh, extensively. How, how, did you, how did your business grow? Um, I, one day I was reading a magazine. Uh, it was called Decor Magazine. It was for picture framers, and I was kind of teaching myself as I went along and had set up a little kind of frame shop in our garage. And in this magazine, a, a woman had taken a mat cutter, and she had cut the words cat out of a mat and put pictures of a cat behind it. I just thought that was the neatest thing I had ever seen. And so I thought, gosh, you could cut out the word dog. <laughs> you know, you could cut out the word Texas and put blue bonnets behind it. And that idea just kind of wouldn't leave me. And finally I thought, you know, 
you could take a diploma and put the letters, since we're both UT graduates, we could put the letters UT cut out in that mat and maybe a picture of the tower and maybe sell those and see how that went. And so we made up a little prototype and I went down to the Alumni Association and I said, uh, I make these and don't you think they're neat and I'm a UT alum and don't you want to sell them? And I think they felt sorry for me and went, okay. We made a little black and white flyer and that was the beginning of it. And then um, I thought, well, you know, there's lots more high schools than there are colleges. Maybe we could do something for high schools. And so um, I called up uh, Mr. Spoonmore, who was the, the uh, superintendent at the time, and I said, where do you guys buy those announcements that have those pretty seals on them? And he gave me the name of the company that does that. I contacted them and I said, can I buy those from you to put with a diploma frame? And so I, I met those gentlemen, um, that was the overall family uh, that worked for Herf Jones, and we struck up a, a relationship and they began to sell high school frames for us. And then our son eventually made the website. He said, you've got to get into the 21st century <laughs> and have a website. So he built a website for us. And so now all of the, the college and the high school frames are on a website. So you just have clients from all over Texas and all over the world, I assume. Pretty much U.S., but, but mainly Texas. Yes. Mainly Texas, yeah. So as your business grew, you decided to locate in Pflugerville. And uh, how did you acquire the building that you're presently in? You want to tell about that, getting the building? No, go ahead. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> um, we, uh, there was a gentleman that used to stop by. We, we had moved out of the garage by now. And we were in a strip center in Austin. And um, there was a gentleman that had a business around the corner who uh, st would stop by just to chit chat. And he uh, kept saying, Gene, you have got to buy a building. You're just paying somebody else's building off for them. And he said, if you ever want to have something that you can call your own, he said, you never know if you can sell a business, but you can always sell real estate by a building. So periodically, David and I would go out and we started looking for buildings. and. Nothing just ever seemed quite right. And then one day we were in Pflugerville and we drove by the old post office building and it was for sale. And so we began the process of trying to buy that. And it, it took a while, but eventually <laughs> that came to fruition. We actually closed the papers on it on my parents' anniversary. And uh, that was in September of 99. And uh, then David took to remodeling it. We gutted it completely and he would spend every day there tearing out things, remodeling. We did all of the interior ourselves with our employees' help. Their husbands and wives came on the weekend and at night and helped, and it was kind of a, a community affair in the sense of all of our, our employees who are pretty much all Pflugerville people. Uh, so uh, you dealt with the uh, U.S. government then? No, they had already sold it as the post office. The, or they had a they never owned it. Okay. To our understanding was it, that yes. they never owned it. Okay. They leased it from, it was about five different family members, if I remember right. All right. Schofield family, uh, the Pfluger well, family. Well, it, it was the first uh, actual standalone off, uh, post office building in Pflugerville, which was, yeah, was I think exciting. So. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, what were your first impressions of downtown then uh, from whenever you first came or, and then as a business owner, uh, some of the other uh, businesses that were downtown at the time and uh, the, the downtown association then eventually? The one I most remember is Barbara and W.C. Kalanick, um, the old Prague Market across the street in the old bank building, which I've always loved that building. Mm -hmm. um, we were probably unusual in that we felt very good about the building in that it had all the, the entrances and exits we needed, dock high lo in loading and all that sort of thing for, for the truck, um, for the trucks that come and pick up and deliver. So we, we really liked the building and we also knew that our business did not rely solely on walk-in traffic. So knowing that downtown didn't really have a great deal of downtown uh, walk about traffic wasn't bothersome to us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the other businesses I remember, Barbara and WC, who else? So many of them sadly have come and gone. Um, the deli was downtown at the time. 
that was kind of the hot spot. Everybody went to the deli for lunch um, because it was the only place you could go nearby to eat anything. Of course, mm -hmm. they've since built their nice new building. And it was quite small. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And no parking. I think our claim to fame was we had the most parking downtown. And I think still do other than City Hall. Mm -hmm. um, but was yeah. Hanover's Hanover's at the time or was it still a lumber yard? It was Hanover's, I believe. Yes. Dodge yeah, City Steakhouse was, was there. Dodge, Dodge City Steakhouse State was across the street. Yes. Uh -huh. In the old building that I think uh -huh. at one time had been many things. Yes, the mercantile. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I liked in the one of the buildings that Erskine and Phyllis owned, there was the oldest working Otis elevator right. west of the Mississippi in that building. It was a hand crank and there was a car dealership on the second floor of the building and they would drive the, the old Model T's onto this elevator, crank it by hand up to two and then display them up there. And it was also the place where um, the Pflugerville fu funeral home, where uh, Pflugerville mourned its, its dead people and, you know. So it was a, a, a big elevator inside, so to yes. speak, or lift. I yeah. think I think it's the building where the daycare center is yes. now. I think so. I believe. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. between the uh, Imkin and Nacy store and the the bank building, mm -hmm. and it was that uh, location. Now, when yeah. and when we bought the building, I do remember Dodge City Steakhouse was in that. Lo they were in where is it PBK Stemmenstein is yes. now. Yeah. Yes. They were in there because we took our employees there when we bought the building. We took them there for lunch. I remember mm -hmm. that. And then shortly after that, it seems like they closed. I think we did the men. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how, uh, the Fleurville Downtown Association uh, is uh, an organization uh, with uh, business owners uh, mm -hmm. as members. Uh, tell us about what they do, some of their functions. Um, PDA is under the umbrella now of PF4, which is Friends for Fleurville's Future. Um, and as such, what we do, we, we formed around 2000, 2001, somewhere in there. Um, and, and our mission was to be somewhat of a little, not really a chamber of commerce, but a group like a chamber, but with its a much smaller focus for just the downtown area. And um, so all the little local businesses pretty much joined that were in the downtown area. And what we did was try to raise funds. One of the fundraisers is David's um, golf tournament that I'd rather he told you about. Um, but, but what the group did was try to raise funds. We put the flower pots downtown that are there still. We bought the city Christmas tree that is put up every Christmas. Um, we started Chili Fest. We started the farmer's market. We um, were real, I don't know if we started or just participated in the Christmas stroll. So some of those things to try to draw people to the downtown area and give it a little bit more of a lively feel because they're, they're really sadly with no courthouse or any, any feature downtown to draw people. We felt like we needed some events and, uh, and definitely some sprucing up. So one of the ways we did that was by starting the golf tournament that I think David can speak to better. And uh, uh, Fleur, uh, it's called Fluger Golf, Fluger is that golf. correct? It's uh, the World Golfing Championship of Pflugerville. And uh, it's... Uh, so have you had special events uh, or special people to come uh, in any manner? Uh, it, actually, our intent was to try to get business owners and developers and people with money uh, to come to Pflugerville uh, when you know, in the early 2000s, when we were trying to attract business um, and uh, people from the governor's office of economic development would come and PCDC has always been our sponsor, the Pflugerville Community Development Corporation. And um, after we've been doing it a few years, uh, we decided that we wanted to honor uh, people who were part of the history of Pflugerville that was fading. And uh, so we began, a, we began to honor a legend each year. Our first one was Timmerman, Theodore Timmerman. And then we did um, 
uh, Willard. We've done uh, Winnie, Audrey Deering, mm -hmm. Win Winnie, Winnie Mae Markerson. Um, names that everyone knows in Pflugerville. And we honor them. We put them in a golf cart and they lead everybody out onto the golf course. And then we feed them dinner and give them a plaque and hope they're happy. <laughs> um, but we've raised quite a bit of money uh, through this. Um, in fact, one of our, we also bought the uh, sound, sound stage, mm -hmm. the sound system that's used in all the downtown events that we donated to the city. Um, and we, we've purchased uh, vintage solar street lights for Pecan Street that are hopefully in the process of being put up in the next few months. This is Gene's idea. It's been slow to come, come to pass, but uh, these, um, we looked all over. There, there, there is nothing like this. So we've had them made, um, old style lights that are solar. And uh, they're gonna put them up in Pflugerville and hopefully we'll be the first like that. I know that over the years, uh, Pecan Street has been the main uh, thoroughfare, uh, and of course then you come on to Main Street to the north, but uh, the little things like uh, putting the flags out on July 4th or on Veterans Day, and uh, the banners now that uh, uh, that come up, uh, even uh -huh. I think on Heather Wild it goes that far, uh, and all the way out to Pecan, and even at um, uh, at the holiday season, uh, there's decorations on the bridges that, you uh -huh. know, with the wreaths and the garland. Uh, somebody had to initiate those ideas, uh, and uh, certainly they have been welcoming and um, crowd attractors. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it, it's commendable, whoever is in that yeah, category. I think the, uh, the decorations, well, I know who did them this year. It was Belinda, Belinda and Britta. Uh, Belinda Byer and Britta Herzog that actually purchased the decorations with, with money from the city, uh, cooperation of the city, and they actually, I think, put them out with city staff. Um, the banners, I think, are still our city also. What we're hoping is once our solar street lights go up that that will be a place that we can put signage and, and banners as well. And then the hope was that eventually we could also put those kind of lights maybe on Main Street and part of railroad and, and just kind of try to continue the theme. It's, it's been a chore because uh, Main Street is still controlled by TxDOT, whereas all the other streets around it belong to Pflugerville. I, I, I think it's Pecan well, that's still controlled. Yes, yes. excuse me, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yes. It is the main thoroughfare, but Pecan yes, and yes, TxDOT, I, I and you yeah. probably have to get approval mm -hmm. for anything that happens there. Right. right, yeah, that's why it's been so slow in going. It's getting, because we purchased the, the lights over a year ago. Two years ago. Two years. So these uh, events, uh, uh, Deutschenfest, for instance, it comes right by your place of business, and I think the main stage, maybe, or announcer stand is somewhere in that area. Tell us about uh, the Deutschenfest weekend, how that is at your business. I know you're closed. We're, we're actually closed on that day, and uh, sadly, that is a day also when UT usually graduates. And because of our business, we're involved with graduation at UT. And so we're almost never there for Deutschenfest. And okay. it, the best we can do is when we get home from the graduation things at UT is to go spend a, an hour or so uh, at Deutschenfest in the evening. And your parking lot at the business is <laughs> yeah, certainly filled. pretty popular. Yes. <laughs> pretty popular. Um, on 9-11, uh, there were some people who decided that it would be memorable to uh, to honor that day. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about what Pflugerville did in that respect uh, on the 10th anniversary. Um, I, I guess that I have to I have to say that was probably my idea. Uh, I have felt very strongly that, you know, when 9-11 happened, um, you saw everybody with flags on their cars, you saw flags on houses, you saw flags at businesses, and then as the years went by, less and less to commemorate the day. It was almost like we, we sort of as a collective entity forgot about it. and. Um, Maybe it's because I'm a naturalized citizen, I don't know. Uh, it struck me that something something had gone away, 
that needed to be remembered because in some way or other it changed everyone's life, not just in the United States but in the world. And we were just kind of letting it go. And so uh, I told David, I said, I, I want to do something. I want to get a committee together. I want to see if we, can, if we can get something done. And so um, I did. I put a wonderful committee of community people together, uh, got people from churches, from schools, from uh, businesses, um, just anyone who was interested from the city, um, PCDC, just all the, the entities from the scout organizations, uh, together and we met uh, numerous times and put the event together and then David wrote um, I don't want to call it a play but I guess it kind of was right the, yeah, a, script. a script for how the day's events were going to go and we started putting the the word out to people and saying if you'd like to participate we want your you know we want you to participate on the day of and I think we had probably about 2,000 people that attended the event. It was at Pflugerville Football Stadium. And I think we had at least 200 people that actually were a part of the, the actual scripted event. Um, we had someone from Fort Hood who came and spoke, a soldier. We um, had people who got out on the stage and acted out the script that David had done where it went by the timeline of that day. And the mayor read that. Yeah, the mayor read that and then we had flags for everyone in the stadium and on the field and um, um, had lots of really good community input and there was not a dime of city money spent on it. Um, the downtown association I think gave us the money to buy the flags mm -hmm. and we bought a banner and that was really the only expense. Funeral home Fun don yeah. donated 2,000 bottles of water. And for people to have. Uh, the schools participated, the choirs, the bands. I mean, it was just Girl really. Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they and, were all and there. And our, um, our police officers and mm -hmm. the firemen and the yes. EMS. Uh, yeah, uh, they brought the big fire truck. Uh, it was a, a magnificent yeah. uh, touching yeah. event. Yeah something I really felt good about. I'm going to go back to um, the city was founded in 1965. You alluded that you were maybe in college during that time. So what was happening uh, in your life or on the national scene in 65 that you remember? Uh, I remember being in a march down Guadalupe Street for equal rights for all people. Hmm. Um, I remember one winter it snowed on campus and kids got out on cafeteria trays and I remember a girl sliding under a van on a cafeteria tray and really <laughs> busting herself up. <laughs> it was awful. We try, were trying to get her out of there. And um, Let's see. Nixon I remember being riding home to Copper's Cove with a friend in his Thunderbird. I, I was afoot myself when uh, John Kennedy's assassination was announced on the radio. Um, I remember some of my professors. Harold Bold was absolutely <laughs> photographic memory. Uh, one day he, a guy asked him a question and he said, I remember that from when I was in grad school. He was probably older then than I am now. He says, I remember that from grad school. He said, it's in the American Journal of Botany on page 217 on the upper right hand side. Next day at class a kid came in and he said, you know I looked all that stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote it down while Dr. Bold was saying it. He says, I look, looked all that stuff up and it was exactly right. Huh. You know? Wow. So you've been uh, able to observe City Hall now that you live actually in Pflugerville and uh, the town is fast growth and things are changing. And uh, I don't know if you've been involved with any of the committees and our commissions within the city as a citizen. I uh, have. And what have you served on, David? 
Uh, well, I've been on two uh, downtown planning commissions. I've been on the PCDC. I've been on the uh, um, budget and finance. Budget and finance. Served as chairman of that for a year, also. Um, what's the one where planning and zoning? I served on that. So, um, from when you served or were aware of uh, the decisions that had to be made and as we've evolved, some things take hold and work and some things don't. Mm -hmm. Are there any um, big issues that you recall that were, that seem monumental and y'all either made it through the hurdle with uh, recommendations or you kind of wait and we grow into something? In terms of the city, uh, my impression, uh, we have made some good plans that n never quite come about. Uh, and personally, I feel that much of this is due uh, to the pressure on the city to build roads because of the rapid growth we're experiencing. Um, I've noticed that other cities like Round Rock, Georgetown, uh, have really focused on their old town areas, which is what we're talking about. Whereas that, that never, um, we never quite get up to the top, you know, on the, on the money requirement list. Um, but uh, there are some things afoot now that uh, may see that change, so I'm optimistic for the future. Um, they uh, uh, spent time and had someone to come in and do that 2030, um, I guess it was a street strategic plan for the future, uh, so they had that map somewhat. Uh, now whether they're following it or not, I uh -huh. don't know, yeah. but uh, I know the investment was made to try to get input from citizens. And, uh, yes. And, um, earlier the same kind of thing for the downtown area at least twice uh, and the, the, it, it's uh, being uncharitable uh, you would say that the studies are done for appeasement. <laughs> um, when you uh, uh, refer to the downtown area sometimes um, with any organization school or city you have an identity and uh, some of that identity is whatever the core happens to be. And um, so you have to think, what is Pflugerville's identity uh -huh. uh, uh, today, or was in <laughs> the past? Uh, uh -huh. um, and that is certainly out there. Yes. I think something that, that I would love to see happen, when you talk about the identity of the city, um, I mean, we were a farming community uh, heavily reliant, I think, on cotton and on the Mocan Railroad and the cotton gin. And, and um, I personally would have loved to have seen the gin property uh, made into something that, that had a historic flair to it. I think it could have been and could still be um, something of a focal point for downtown. But so far that hasn't happened, I think, for money reasons and, and probably some others. Um, you know, back when, when that property was available, the city didn't have the money to purchase it, and so it was purchased by the church next door. But I think there's still a possibility there for that to happen, because really if you look at our downtown area, um, that sort of was the history. That's what brought people into town, was the farmers came to town to shop or to bring their cotton or whatever. And so if, I think to me, if we're going to somehow make use of that history, that would be a way to do it. Well, I, I think also as your uh, uh, community is growing, um, particularly fast like Flicker Village, you have the uh, big boxes, the corporate mm -hmm. uh, folks that come in, sure. and then you have the small business people that uh, really have to be creative in order mm -hmm. to be competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, sometimes we see uh, businesses uh, particularly in downtown that that make an effort and to be sustainable is, is uh, 
mm-hmm. takes a, a lot of effort and energy mm-hmm. and patience. Yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah. It's a challenge. Gene's new business is uh, framing flat screen TVs. And uh, she's had customers from Las Vegas casinos to the federal government uh, contact her. Basically, it was our son's idea, and Gene implemented it. And uh, there. Well, actually, it's it's really his business. He he built the website for it, and we we fulfilled the orders. Um, but yeah, when you talk about that, you've got to. I think part of why we've been sustained is that we don't have all our eggs in one basket. And frequently, I think small businesses do. They're forced to because of. I don't know, all sorts of constraints, space constraints, money constraints, whatever, you know, have you. Um, if you're a restaurant, you, you've got to sell food. Um, we happen to be a frame shop, but we can sell many different kinds of frames. So I think that's part of why we've been able to last, is that we can do more than one, more than one thing, even though they're all similar. Um, and I think that's what's so difficult for small businesses, is finding something that can sustain them but maybe also has something else to it that they can you know they can grow with another thing i think that uh, both of you bring to the community is uh, a lively spirit and uh, <laughs> it's sometimes humor uh, and we look at life with a smile right where does that come from other than your personality <laughs> Um, I had a grandmother, my German grandmother, uh, who went through world, the, the war in Germany, um, but was all, she just always had a ton of little sayings and, and had a spirit to her. I think some of it came from her for me. Um, I have an aunt, a German aunt, who was also raised along with me with, with that grandmother, who had a very good sense of humor and still does um, in her 80s. Uh, but I think a lot of it came from David, actually. He, I think he taught me how to, how to have fun. And um, one of my favorite things that he ever said, we were interviewed one time about the business, and we were asked, um, what's the most fun thing about working together? Because at the time, he was spending more time uh, at the business. And he said, the fact that you can kiss on the job. <laughs> so. that, 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 that's kind of cool. So what do you see uh, in the next uh, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50 years for uh, the community of Pflugerville? I would say an increasingly diverse community, Mm -hmm. um, but a happy one. I think there, and I hope this never goes away, but there is, Despite the fact there are 50,000 people here, there is still a wonderful small town charm to Pflugerville, Mm -hmm. as exemplified in the different uh, Deutschen Fest events, uh, Chili Fest, and so on. Um, (laughs) I expect the city to have difficulties with its retirement system at some point. Um, well, I think it's, it is it, extremely generous at this time. It's really been some of these uh, events that started out small mm-hmm. that uh, has attracted people even in coming to. Uh, I think the Chili Fest uh, mm-hmm. and the Deutschen Fest similarly. When they started out, they were very, very local mm-hmm. community events. Uh, that everybody came to and you kind of saw your family and friends. And uh, they become popular because of the publicity and because of the quality of the event. Mm -hmm. And so certainly it's uh, it's been a a destination for uh, people who are looking for something to do to come to Pflugerville. Right. And then once they come, they think this may be a good place to live. Right. (laughs) So. Yeah, I still hear a lot. We just have to think of what the next event could be. Right. I, lots, lots of people always uh, say to us things like, I've never had such good friends as in Pflugerville. They're very loyal people. Um, they're very uh, kind. Everybody helps each other. You know, all you have to do is, is hear, of, yeah, hear of one child that's been hurt or is sick or whatever, and boom, every place you go, there's a jar to contribute or, or there's a fundraiser to help that family. And I think that's something that I hope Pflugerville keeps. 
um, and, and doesn't lose in, in the growth. Uh, also, you have both been very much involved. You said you served on several committees and you've done numerous things from school to community. Is there anything we could say to citizens uh, or newcomers on uh, how to get involved in the city and to make a difference? Because that, that's truly what makes a community. I would say volunteer. The city volunteer at whatever you can volunteer at, at your church, at your school or whatever, because you're going to meet wonderful people who, who care. Uh, don't just sit in your house. Volunteer. The city website lists the city vacancies and people should know that these are not jobs where um, you need an enormous background of credentials. What they really like are people who are warm, by that I mean breathing, uh, <laughs> and able to do work and approach it with an open spirit. That's really all it takes. Yeah, where you live, did y'all, um, did your little neighborhood do the community uh, national night out? I honestly don't remember that. If they did, that has frequently I, hit on my golf tournament, <laughs> and so we don't get home till ten o'clock that night. Okay, you're, you, yeah, you're running oh, a business, so your yeah, hours are quite yeah. different. Now, in our in our old neighborhood, before we we built the house in Pflugerville, there I don't remember it. I know they do have yeah. the night out in our community yes, now. Uh -huh. You know that we've moved into Pflugerville, but. Um, yeah, frequently we're not able to participate, sadly, in that one. Well, thank you so much for sharing your stories. And most of all, thank you for what you've done for the community. It, uh, you've left some big footprints, and I know <laughs> that you'll continue to make some more footprints. So well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. genuinely. <laughs> thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's great. Okay.